uh, we are a voice of prayer, bringing heaven to earth and bringing glory to God. Uh, thank you for joining us in this teaching tonight. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of truth. And we thank you for uh, the teaching tonight, Lord, that as you have directed me into these uh, scriptures and passages, uh, to, to look into that, the perfect law of liberty, that which was spoken beforehand in the Old Testament that spoke of Jesus, uh, who would have the tongue of the learned. And that, Father, then as we have received Jesus, we should also have the tongue of the learned. We thank you uh, that uh, Jesus was sent and that we are to be people of faith. We're thankful for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father, for that uh, the word abides in us and that we, Father, are rich. We're rich in Jesus. We're rich in that covenant that was uh, be began in the beginning and then each covenant that was cut. And then as Jesus uh, brought uh, this dispensation, uh, and Father, that we have salvation through Jesus and that we uh, are uh, children of God, becoming the sons of God, those who operate by faith. We thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way in this teaching. Holy Spirit, have have your way. If there are things that are not to be said, may I be mute. Uh, Father, for that that is of the glory of God, Father, may it be given to the precise precision, cutting like a knife that, of, that needs to be removed from our thinking, removed from our hearts, and then it dispels uh, in us the, uh, that which <laughs> works to the glory of God, uh, that, that has to be removed, that has to be uh, 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 completely uh, moved out where the light will shine and that we have vision to see that we are no longer the the blind leading the blind. Father, we thank you for the light of your word in our lives and in this teaching tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Father, we th we're thankful for those who are receiving these teachings. And Father, tonight I pray for uh, finances in their checking accounts. I thank you for finances to come. Blessings of the Lord make us rich, and he adds no sorrow. I know that's a word for several people. Uh, God does not add sorrow to our lives. God does not add sorrow. Uh, the teaching tonight, the tongue of the learned, the tongue of the learned, Isaiah 50, <clears throat> and reading verses 4 through 5, and we know from this uh, two verses has to do with Jesus Christ, has to do with the Messiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak, it says, a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning, and by morning he awakens my ear uh, to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. Uh, and before I get into each one of these, I want to say... Uh, uh, of the the ver uh, each word from this verse is uh, have you ever been in a church service and it's specifically when they get to the point about the finances about the giving my husband and I have seen this uh, uh, in previous uh, um, because he was in leadership and uh, seen over the finances he was over the ushers and and so the money would be gathered and uh, and there was this man that he would just get so mad. Uh, he did not have the hearing ear, and he would just wad up his money, the, the, the green dollar bill, and he just wad it until it was this tight little, little ball, smaller than a golf ball. And he would have it so tight that when they came around and then the money was taken to the back and it was counted and then uh, put in bags and put in the safe, uh, we knew who gave that 
that little ball of money. I won't say what it appeared like, but uh, that's where their heart was. They were not hearing. They were not hearing. And so the, the tongue is the word from this uh, two verses, tongue, Lashon. It's to eat, to drink, to speak. It also has the meaning of tongue of water and tongue of fire. It also has the meaning as an ingot, uh, that which is uh, re regarding like a, a bar uh, uh, of gold or a bar of silver. That's the way our tongues are supposed to be uh, in speaking truth. That, that speaks of uh, influence. Uh, the learned, giving me the tongue of the learned, is the word lemud. It has the meaning of being instructed as a custom and as a disciple. And so it's a continual daily walk. It's being continually accustomed to being taught. Uh, so learning that, being instructed by God to speak is the word oath. It means to hasten. Uh, sucker, assistance and hardships or stress relating to the helping hand. Uh, and it brings glory to God. It's not supposed to bring glory to us, but to God. Right. That God would have you in a place that you can do it, but then don't go broadcast it all over, you know, the late news. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, we, all of us have the opportunity to do that daily. Uh, but we're not to broadcast it. And then season, ozen, ozen, ozen is a broadness as solid as concrete. Now understand this, this season, it speaks in the broadness as uh, also to an audience. Uh, an audience that season to hear. They're solid in the foundation, the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. They've uh, been established in the Word. They have a hearing ear. And so in this season, this season with this specific audience, uh, there's that season as to the ear that they will hear this word. I believe we're in such a season right now where there are people who are hungry and they really want to know uh, the word of God that's going to help them to live a daily life. Amen. And then weary is the word yaf, uh, yaf as exhausted. So uh, there are people that can cross our paths and they're weary. There are some you can see that are diligent. They show up on time to do their job. We saw that today. And they're out there just, just going along. I mean, they're not, they, they didn't have breakfast and it didn't look like they were going to have lunch either. And they just kept working. They were diligent to continue their, their job. And then uh, awakens, awakens uh, you, you are is the word. It's uh, pronounced or like door, like the door. D o o r o. It's o o r to wake with eyes wide open. It also means to stir yourself up. Yeah. And uh, we have to be awakened to the things of God. It's easy for uh, someone to hear about, you know, so-and-so next door or so-and-so across the street or, or someone in the next county. They're having a party and, and people like those things. But uh, this is that being awakened to the things of God that's of an influence. Uh, their party, their parade can either be rained on, especially if it rains tonight. <laughs> And then, after extremely warm days, hallelujah, we give thanks for sun and shine uh, and the warmth of it. But praise the Lord, we're not in May yet. Right. And so, we want to come back to <laughs> temperatures that are really normal for the month of May. Amen. And so, uh, you know, we have to be awakened to stir ourselves up to God. The things of the world, the parades, the parties, they will end. If we have an opportunity to minister to someone, do we tell them about Jesus? Do we uh, do something in a way that knows you're different from everyone else? 
And so uh, I want to touch on someone who had the tongue of the learned. Moses was given the tongue of the learned. Moses was given this tongue uh, to speak to the heart of Pharaoh. It consisted of terror and it consisted of conviction. Um, Jesus was pretty much the same way. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, on earth as it is in heaven. He was bringing, uh, you know, God was bringing his son, delivering him to us, uh, uh, that he would not present wrath anymore on people uh, if they would just obey. That's all he was looking for was some of the obedient ear and to be diligent about following through in obedience. And so we find this in Exodus 4 and 10 through 11. It says in the New King James Version, Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh, my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech. Verse 11, uh, he also mentions of being a slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind, have not I, the Lord? And so Moses considered him slow of speech, uh, inadequate as the persuasive speaker. He was going to be in a confrontation with someone. And, and so <laughs> we have to know that when God has put... Uh, leaders in certain place, uh, it's most likely that God has commanded that to be and you are to obey them. Right. Sometimes, though, God moves someone out of the way to bring someone else in. Right. But we, we know that as a, the leader of this country, we know that God has placed them. Don't mess with that. Don't touch it. Don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Wow. Because what God has put there, uh, you don't want to be found fighting against God. Right. And so um, Moses was put in this place. He didn't f uh, figure himself to be that with eloquent speech or who could front confront Pharaoh. And so within this, God did not change his mind. Moses was to be sent. Uh, and with that, uh, God had equipped Moses to do uh, and for this purpose that he was sent. And so though the communication, the communication uh, uh, chain had changed, still Moses was leading because he's uh, had the relationship with God. God put, uh, put him in that position. And so Aaron could not bypass him. Right. Miriam could not bypass Moses. Right. If you read on through, uh, yeah, these people had some issues about it. That's another teaching. Yeah. Right. And so uh, God was still speaking to Moses. Uh, Moses to Aaron, and then, of course, Aaron would speak to the people. Uh, Jesus also had the tongue of the learned. We know this from Isaiah 50. The prophet spoke in the Old Testament. Uh, he was to give the exact word that the Father had given him. We find this in Ezekiel. Another prophet said this, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 3 and 17 New King James Version, Son of man, I've made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word from my mouth and give them warning from me. Matthew 13 and 52, uh, he said, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure, things new and old. And so, uh, and we'll look a little bit more into this. Uh, when we get uh, to the tongue of the learned to instruct others. But uh, Jesus was bringing the, of the Old Testament into the new, and the new which we know as uh, the kingdom of God had come. Amen. Jesus' uh, personal training was evident. Luke 2, reading verses 43 to verse 52 when they had finished the days as they returned the boy jesus yes he lingered he lingered behind in jerusalem and joseph and his mother mary did not know this uh verse 44 but supposing him to have been in the company they went a day's journey and sought him they sought him among relatives they sought him among uh, acquaintances 
And we get to verse 45, they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Uh, so now it was that after three days, three days they're searching mm -hmm. for him. And, uh, and it says, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of teachers, and Jesus was both listening to them, and he was asking them questions. Right. I love it when people ask you questions, right. uh, when they know something uh, that possibly they don't know, but they, they know you know. Right. And, uh, and so uh, people should be relaxed enough to, to, to experience that. But the, it also comes to the heart that's really seeking, right. really seeking. Right. And so, <laughs> hallelujah, verse 47, And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Uh, they were astonished. Uh, they said, <laughs> so when they saw him, verse 48, this is Mary and Joseph, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously yeah she was anxious mm -hmm. uh, so he he says and he said why did you seek me did you not know that I would be about my father's business but they did not understand the statement with which he spoke to them verse 51 then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and he was subject to them yes he had to probably still take the trash out Yes, he probably still had to do the things that he did before. But now Mary was seeing a side of him that they didn't know, uh, especially Mary, probably about her son. Right. And so she kept, uh, Mary kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and with man. Right. Uh, the tongue of the learned to instruct others. Uh, Jesus instructed, uh, but not all held him in the respect uh, that he should have gotten. Matthew 13, uh, again, and we're going to look at verse 52, but we're going to read on to verse 54. It says, Then he said to them, Therefore every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure, things of new and old. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there, and when he came to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished. And they said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Uh, this wasn't a compliment. They were angry. Mm -hmm. They had attitude, you know. And so even those who held contempt toward him knew he spoke and taught differently. That's why they were upset. That's like when you see people and they're to give an offering. Their some are just, they just want to hold on to their money. They're, it's just so tight. And, and, and they don't want to. And then they got attitude. Well, it's issues within the heart. Um, and so uh, he connected the new with the old. He connected the teachings and prophecies of the Old Testament with the kingdom of God that had come through him. Do not let false teachers tell you you only need the New Testament. The Old Testament speaks of Jesus' coming when he appeared in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then if you look uh, later on in that from Acts to Revelation, you see it's still talking about his return. So we need both right. of the Old and the New Testament. Amen. He was suited Jesus, yes, suited for special work, and the Father qualified him for the work before him. We know that he was anointed to do the work. Jesus would open ears of sinners to hear, Matthew 13, 15, for this nation's heart, talking about Israel, has grown gross, it's fat, it's dull, their ears are heavy, difficult of hearing, and their eyes are tightly closed, uh, lest they see and perceive with their eyes and hear and comprehend, it says, the sense with their ears, and, and grasp and understand with their heart and turn, and he says, I should heal them. In truth, the parables were given to those who would hear the kingdom of God. With the hearing ear, the truth uh, was an easily remembered form so that hostiles against it would not understand and judgment would be declared on those who would not receive it. 
we see that in uh, that even 70 years after Jesus, he said what was going to happen, that there would not be one stone left on the temple, one on top of the other. And it was given from the Old Testament. And Jesus said it when he was alive, that these... And so when Jesus taught, uh, seekers were stimulated to seek or probe deeper understanding. Those who had already shut their eyes and ears to truth would not realize the significance of what they were seeing or the significance of what they were hearing. Consequently, they would not repent and receive forgiveness. Proverbs 18:15. The mind of the prudent is ever getting knowledge, and the hair of the wise is ever seeking, it's inquiring, it's craving knowledge. In this, the prudent and the wise will seek knowledge. But this does not come automatically. Second Timothy 2 and 15 in the Amplified Bible says, Study and eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Uh, those who are the prudent have wisdom. They are those who are always more, wanting more wisdom. And we know that being prudent is having right behavior. It's the behavior that God said for us to have in following in the right ways, which is righteousness uh, of God in Christ Jesus. We have that righteousness. We became righteous when we received Amen. Jesus as Lord. And so there are always those wanting more wisdom. They understand and value that wisdom um, that is of application of, no, of understanding with knowledge to apply it to their everyday life. And so that is the importance of having right behavior to make the right decisions in God. Second uh, Peter 1 verses 10 through 11. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an interest will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, it's the, the entrance of when we receive Jesus. It's a guaranteed uh, abundant. It's into the kingdom of God uh, that we've obtained like precious faith. Uh, we increase in grace and peace. We live a godly life that's fruitful in knowledge, living free from past sins, uh, being diligent to make our calling and election sure. Uh, I wanted to touch on this because uh, in this day when Peter was writing this, uh, that calling and election sure was th that these were, uh, <laughs> he was writing it to the illusion of a Ro Roman general who had been to battle and he come back and had done everything he was supposed to do and he was victorious and he's given a parade. We have to understand that that's where we're supposed to be right now. Amen. Uh, that we <laughs> have attained that victory uh, and so uh, as this, uh, this victory that has come, this conquest and this uh, parade is being presented and this man is being honored, we have to understand that is when we stay in God, he's going to honor us right. because we're seeking after him. We're looking after his ways and following his truths uh, that's ordered. Jesus had human teachers, Psalm 119, verse 97 to 104. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Verse 99, it says, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my uh, your uh, testimonies are on meditations. I understand more than the, the ancients. We know them as sages and teachers today. Right. We know that uh, these that they had back then, the ancients that uh, wrote, just like scribes that were there writing everything as it was uh, revealed day by day. Right. And uh, we're supposed to be doing that with God's word, saying God's word, revealing God's word. And so, verse uh, 101, 
It says, I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. Verse 1 and 2, I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. Verse 1 and 3, how sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter, it says, than honey to my mouth. And then, of course, verse 1 and 4, I love this one. I have it highlighted. Mm -hmm. Through your precepts I get understand, therefore I hate every false way. We know this is about Jesus. Right. Because he had the Holy Spirit. He had uh, human teachers. Uh, he had the Holy Spirit. Right. And there are still churches today that refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Wow. Um, uh, uh, verses 97 through 98, wisdom above all enemies through these commands was true of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 99 referred to uh, back to Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2. It says this, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord God is to be our starting point. Wisdom is the permanent characteristic of the Messiah. Other references can be found, uh, and this is for your time uh, to uh, seek and go deeper. Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 6. Isaiah 61, verses uh, 1 and 2. And then Luke 2, verse 40 and uh, 52. Jesus hated every false way. This is recorded in John 2, 13 through 17. Jesus cleansed the temple of extortioners. It was the priest at that time who sold licenses to vendors profaning the temple. And Jesus went in to clean house. Yeah. God's word has to be cleaning our house, uh, our heart. Uh, and if we're still looking for attention... No said. Uh, ancients, the elder man uh, or age person means to become that that flows with age. Older persons are respected in scripture uh, because their experience in life brought them wisdom. Uh, we see this regarded in Moses and the elders, Exodus 24, 9 through 14. It says that Moses went up, also Aaron. Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. So they went together as a group. They're going up, uh, and he says, and they saw the God of Israel. Now this is a, a Mount Sinai, and it says, and there was under his feet, so they're actually seeing God under God's feet, there was a paved work of sapphire stone. It was like the very heavens in its clarity. So these people together, these who were in leadership, saw this together with Moses, who God was speaking to. And then it says, verse 11, but on the nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand. They saw God, they ate, they drank, but God didn't lay his hand on them so they could prophesy. He did this with Saul. He laid hands on his Saul when he was appointed king. And he could prophesy with the others, but Saul really didn't have heart change. Verse 12, then the Lord said to Moses, we'll come up to me on the mountain and be there and I will give you uh, tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I've written that you may teach them. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up on the mountain of God and to receive these ten commandments. Elders respected because of their experience. Among these they said at Mount Sinai they had food set before them. God did this. And so we are to walk with the elder. We heed the Lord. We know the way to be narrow and the less traveled. I mean, he went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. What is God going to have you do? Because hmm. you have something to do for God. Right. Purpose. Kings counseled. 1 Kings 12, verses 6 through 8. And then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he says, how do you advise me to answer these people? Uh, verse 7, and they spoke to him, saying, If you will be servant to these people today, and serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, they will be your servants. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him. King Rehoboam was rejecting what the elders were telling him. Guess who he ran to? It says he consulted the young man who had grown up with him and who stood before him. 
Yeah, let's go rub elbows. We're, we're like him because he's just like us and he sounds just like us. But here, they were trying to give him wisdom. And we're not going into all of that because we're looking at something else. Right. But please, please delve into this. Look into the, this word because this uh, man as king rejected the elders speaking what the way of the Lord was. Wow. Qualified by God. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God has put upon me because the Lord has anointed, the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison. It says to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, uh, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Was, this was God's doing. It's spoken by Isaiah about Jesus to be qualified to do this. And then Jesus speaks this. This is, this is where Jesus is speaking of his qualification. Luke 4, 18 through 21. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, yes, liberty to the captives, and uh, this recovery of sight to the blind, to set that liberty those who are the oppressed. And then verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it back to them. Uh, the attendant took it, sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Today, he says, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Wow. And so again, uh, Jesus was doing that, that he was the qualified. He was already uh, sensing it in his heart that God qualified him uh, to do what he went there to do. I mean, he's been baptized in the Jordan. And, and I believe Jesus really had the Holy Spirit because when you look at the... the uh, 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 Elizabeth and Mary, and we talked about this in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but when uh, you know when Elizabeth uh, uh, knew that Jesus was in the womb of Mary, she showed up, and the baby, which would have been John the Baptist, right. jumped in her womb, leaped, uh, and so she knew that, that was the Lord. And I believe that just as Elizabeth had and John had the anointing, I believe not only did Mary have the anointing, but I believe the baby Jesus already had the anointing. Right. He claimed to speak what God had given him. We find this in John 7, 16 through 17. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from God or whether I speak on my own authority. John 8 and 28, Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, that I am nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. John 8, 46 to 47, Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God uh, hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. And again, if you see someone crumbling their money in church, they're not of God. This goes with the, the teachings within the church when you see somebody just get up and leave. You know, I'm not going to sit here and listen to that. I'm just going to click you off. Well, we have to look at the, the heart because uh, we know that this is the God's word and all this is <laughs> scripture. Then what is it that makes you want to shut it up because is it showing you a light in something that needs to be removed? And so uh, John 12, 49, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18. And I will raise up for them a prophet from among their brethren like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And so we see this even spoke back in Deuteronomy is brought forward into the New Testament. The tongue of the learned, those who hear and yield to the authority of God's word, they walk completely focused. Uh, they're set like flint. 
uh, they're not looking to the world. They're, li they're listening for the sound of God, and they're listening to see if it's in you. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're listening to see if it's in me. Right. Hallelujah. Jesus declared this, John 8, 47, He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Paul also noted that to respond otherwise is to compromise the level of life to which we have been called, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 13 through 16. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are, yes, spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judge is all things yet for himself. He is rightly judged by no one. Verse 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Jesus reminded of uh, this less traveled path. We are to follow him in this pathway. We have the mind of Christ. Jesus didn't take that the wide super highway with everybody going on board and having their parades and you know they're and they're they're doing these things. Uh, the things of the world will never bring you anything but destruction. Spiritual people are to refuse the natural inclination of fallen men. As we hear and yield to the authority of God's word, we bear the, that we are not of this world, nor of its error. We're to be in the fear of the Lord, that is to be educated. Proverbs 1, verses 3 through 7 Reading from the Amplified Bible, it says this, Receive instruction in wise dealing and the discipline of wise thoughtfulness, righteousness, justice, and integrity, that prudence may be given to the simple and knowledge, discretion, discernment to the youth. Then it goes on, verse 5, The wise will also hear and increase in learning, and the person of understanding will acquire skill and attain to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his course rightly. Verse 6, that people may understand a proverb and a figure of speech or an enigma with its interpretation and the words of, of, of their wise and dark sayings or riddles. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and the principal and choice part of knowledge, its starting point and its essence. But fools despise skillful and godly wisdom, instruction and discipline. In closing, we're reminded that when we visit the doctor's office, they speak a different language uh, than most people. They speak in terms of which they studied in medical school for a length of study in the field that they chose. Their speech or language is the vastness of the body to its workings. Uh, they have studied uh, the problems of the body, and when it is no longer at ease, then they know it is diseased. Mm -hmm. The practice of each doctor is limited to that which they studied from infants to the elderly. The medication sometimes cannot be understood, and the equipment to take selfies of all of these important organs is vital to the right diagnosis. But still, they are limited. The attorney will have his case heard in the court of law. This person who studies the law within the state he lives will be licensed in said state and still speaks as that of the trained attorney in law. He will or should know the law inside out. Still, his expertise is limited to that which he is taught. My husband has expertise in machinery and the maintenance of it. This includes maintenance of turbine en engines to run a dam. He did not learn this in one day, but took many years and by the hand of God to hear and obey God himself. He speaks of the dam, manages the 120 plus workers who work there, plus multitudes of contractors who are brought in when the point of these workings of the dam require that extra attention to keep the dam running in that peak performance, operating performances, producing power to many states. Because my husband seeks the Lord, he's found with the Lord, and the Lord directs his step. My husband will speak the same because he listens to what God says, and then my husband will speak the same to the people. Amen. The speech of that language we are to have is that of the, of the learned of the tongue that comes from God. This very instruction to us is that of the wise and the discipline in thoughtfulness, 
righteousness, yes, and justice. That is from God, for the wise will hear and increase in learning. As the person of understanding, we will each acquire and attain a skill and attain sound counsel. For we are to have the hit figure of speech as learned, one of authority, one with wisdom drawing from the wells of salvation, and who have a caring reverence and that worshipful fear of the Lord, for without Him we can do nothing. Our influence is to be of the wisdom from God and that speaks to the brokenness of heart, that spells out completely the way to salvation and impacts a community for God's glory. It will be one person at a time. It's bringing glory to God and may people truly know us when we speak that we speak that what we speak is given to us by God that choice is part of knowledge for we are disciplined and instructed in it in Jesus name amen and an amen <laughs>